And one of the things, again, that the church allowed them to do was we opened up the hospitality wing, just the back portion there, so that they would have access to water and bathroom facilities. And I talked to the, the Virginia Power people and the, their contractors that came in, and they were from all over the state and out of state that we're in, and they said, thank you very much for that opportunity. They come with five days of food, they're prepared to sleep in their trucks, but they don't necessarily know where they have to go, can go to the bathroom. They appreciate that. And remember that tomorrow, Monday, is Bible study day with Susan Manning. And our special music this morning is Sue Burton and Lynn Saunders on the piano. Thank you. Let us worship God.
thank your church for being responsive to the community. Um, many lives were impacted, not just with loss of power, um, loss of running water in their home, um, loss of refrigeration that kept items that they needed for nourishment um, lost. And it didn't just cycle in one area, it was really widespread in terms of uh, the number of people who were out. Over 300,000 people um, in the Stanford Roads area were totally without power for at least a day, some for two days, some for three, and some are still struggling even now, proof of working last night even. So thank you, church, for opening your hearts to respond, not only to those that come in to serve others and restore power, but to feed and to provide nourishment for those that are actually doing work as well. I also uh, want to say a good morning and a welcome. It has been, I believe, at least a year and a half since I've been able to share with you. Uh, so it's an honor for me to be back with you again. Um, I'll be with you in two weeks again. And so I'll be looking forward to that. Uh, but as we go through these very hot days of August and have come through a storm, it is good to gather in God's house again and worship together. If you are able, I would like you to stand for the reading of Scripture. And if you are more comfortable being seated, then please remain seated where you're at. Be reading from Psalm 145, which will be our text today. This is a praise of David. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. What generation shall laud your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts? On the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works, I will meditate. The might of your awesome deeds shall be proclaimed, and I will declare your greatness. They shall celebrate the fame of your abundant goodness, and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. You may be seated. And the Lord bless the reading of his word. If I was to ask you today to identify the speaker of the words that I'm about to share, I wonder if you could do it. Here are those words. America's challenge of today has forged man's destiny of tomorrow. Any takers on who might have said that? Those words, spoken almost 50 years ago, not during COVID, almost 50 years ago by an American astronaut Gene Cernan was his name, 1972. They ring pretty true for us today, don't they? I'll read them again. America's challenge of today has forged man's destiny tomorrow. Strange times, new challenges. Admitted from a certain real world perspective, the future no longer looks as stable as it did a few months ago. For many of us in that specific, vulnerable population, it might even seem threatening. The daily onslaught of news is discouraging. The real danger to human health is scary. And the continuing issue of economic decay all around us is very real. How can we continue to grow, carry our individual lives and our families forward and still serve others in such a time as this. When we are physically and literally limited in the scope of what we can do, how can we continue to leave an imprint of positivity and fragrance of God's grace on all that we touch? I'm going to suggest that it's all about leaving footprints of faith in the sands of crisis. Before we dig in this morning, I want to share my key assumption with you from Scripture. All that follows is informed, infused, and invigorated by faith in Christ. Being a Christ follower is not only for those convenient times in life. 
Christ and unyielding faith in Him is for all times. Yes, even when all about us is falling apart. So for our journey today, um, I want us to see that Christ is central. And I believe every day, you and I, every day, choose the kind of footprints we leave behind. Affirming, positive, good, or less than good. My big suggestion today is kind of a takeaway when our brief time is done, is to encourage you to follow the footprints of Christ who blazed the trail for us. And as a springboard, we'll take the words of David, his praise in Psalm 145, and the words of the astronaut Gene Cernan, and I hope that they will spiritually motivate us today. As Cernan said, how we face this real challenge before us today will forge much of what our tomorrows will look like. I'm convinced this requires us to shift our perspective beyond the COVID-19 news, beyond a tornado or two in our particular region, beyond all the violence in America, to lift our eyes from the struggle and to see the opportunities, to understand, yes, to know in our minds and our hearts that it's in times of struggle and even quietness that great personal strength can evolve. To know that we still have the capacity as Christ followers to make a difference, as evidenced by the serving of food and the opening of a fellowship hall so for persons that come in to serve others can be ministered to in their personal needs. And to discover how even in an era of social distancing, we can serve others. So then, the astronaut that I quoted earlier traveled into space three times. And twice he was on the moon. He was the commander of Apollo 17. And in December of 1972, the final Apollo lunar landing, he was literally, hear this, the last person to walk on the moon. Part of the story is important for us today at St. Andrews. In the midst of COVID-19, he left a lasting impression on history quite literally, as his footprints can still be seen. He was a fighter pilot, and he was a Navy officer, but he loved space. His physical skills and intelligence and his acumen for exploration were well suited to becoming an astronaut, but despite all his personal experiences, as an officer, he was, he, he really wanted to go to space. He never lost the desire to see the next frontier, and it was far more than a career for him. When a reporter asked him many years later, at age 82, if he would like to go to Mars, he quickly said, you want to go with me? He was still looking for that next grand adventure, and he wanted others to join with him in whatever the quest would be to take those next steps toward what he called God's front porch. That's dreaming. That's reaching. That's hoping. Hoping as his body was ravaged and wasting away from cancer. That should be our spirit as well. Regardless of the crisis, regardless of the crisis, to keep walking in faith, trusting in Christ, looking for God's front porch. David, the psalmist, provides some clues to us on how important honoring God is during a time like this and what it can do for you and I. James Montgomery Boyce said in Psalm 145 that it is a monumental psalm, a fit summary of all David had learned in a long lifetime of following hard after the Almighty. It's the last psalm in the book of Psalms attributed to David. And it follows what's called an acrostic pattern, meaning at the beginning letter or word of each sentence, the start of the sentence begins with the next letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It's pretty incredible how David crafted that. It was very important in Jewish life. In fact, 
this song, this one song, was to be repeated three times a day, twice in the morning, what we would call morning vespers, and once in the evening, evening vespers, when the day was done. The honoring of God was to be how we started our day and how we concluded our day. And um, there are two key lessons, and I'll share these briefly. His lesson number one in verses one through three is honor God at all times. He talks about this in four ways. It's first of all very personal to him. He uses the word you and my. He talks about his own personal life and relationship to God. That is the way each of us should honor him personally. He talks about it in terms of surrender. Remember, he is an earthly king. But he says in the opening line, my God, my king. He understands the need to surrender in the presence of God. If there's going to be any food forward movement or service to others. The earthly king talking to the heavenly king. It's a great model for us every day. He not only talked about it personally in terms of surrender, he also talked about it with a sense of permanence. Twice in the opening lines, he says, forever and ever, every day, it's something that captivates his attention to serve God, to live for God, to honor God at all times, forever and ever, every day. And then it's volitional. Four times in these opening verses, he utters the words, I will. He's saying to God, God, this is going to be hard to run forward. This is going to be difficult to challenge ahead. But I will honor you. I will serve you. I will praise you. I will follow you. Firm resolve is what it takes to get through a COVID crisis. Firm resolve is what it takes to get through any crisis. And he knows God in the following ways. He calls him king, as I've already said. He indicates to God that he knows he is great. Not that David is great, that God is great. And then he uses the word mystery. There's something other about God that we just don't understand. There's something different, unique, special, a characteristic of God that supplements, that fulfills, that completes our life, that makes him other than us. We can't do it on our own, only in Him. And in that is a great mystery that we need someone other than ourselves to complete our life. And the psalmist David in this praise would say that someone is God. Lesson two, we're not only to honor God in all times, David would say we're to honor God in all our ways as well. He uses the words repeatedly in three verses. We should praise God. We should declare His wonders. We should meditate on Him. We should speak about Him. We should declare His mighty acts. We must utter what He's done, and we should sing to Him. C.H. Spurgeon said this, that these were so many numerous good words about God, that His works are great, that His acts are great, that He's glorious, that he's majestic, that he's mighty, that he's awesome, he's great, he's good, he's righteous. He's saying that this is a radiant mass to enemy, that there really are no words sufficient enough to expect, express God's splendor. See, Spurgeon went on to say, the generations shall unite, and together they shall make up an extraordinary history each generation shall contribute its chapter, and all the generations together shall compose a volume of matchless praise. Wow. Sermon, back to the astronaut, when asked about any future trips to the moon, said, when they, now remember, he's 82, when they get another space cap ready, I'll be the first in line. Despite being advanced in years, and again, very ill, in fact, he would die not long after this, he never lost his desire to take the next step, not only in his vocation, but in his faith. As noted earlier, he uttered those words, America's challenge of today has forged man's destiny of tomorrow. Seen against the backdrop of COVID-19, 
Sounds kind of eerie, doesn't it? The current crisis may or may not alter our future. It certainly has in the short term. Regardless, what we choose to do every day is accept the challenge before us and figure out a way as described by David in the Psalms and reinforced by the words of sermon to continue on, to leave a lasting footprint. There's something there for all of us to aspire to. When he passed away shortly after that interview that I just quoted from, his main NASA administrator, Charles Bolton, stood up and said, truly America has lost a patriot and a pioneer who helped shape our country's bold ambitions to do things, listen, that humankind had never before. That's quite a legacy. He shaped the space program. He led it to new heights. He created a pathway. He left a mark. He purposed to leave footprints that would impact people, as we can do today for those that are hurting, for those that are needy, for those that are scared, for those that truly need what only our God can deliver. We most likely, you and I, will never go to the moon. But impacting people for good? Now, that's something worth sinking your teeth into right here in the North of that at St. Andrews. And as important as the truth is, in my opinion, that alone is not the most important part of his story. He was incredibly close with his young daughter. Her name was Tracy. He actually took the time when he was on the surface of the moon to write her initials in the dust of the moon. By the way, there was no wind there, so guess what? That happened in 1972. Those initials can still be seen today. Wow. Talk about a lasting legacy. That's special. More than initials carved in a tree that can be cut down or blown down by a storm. More than initials put in concrete that can be ripped up and taken away and disposed of. On the moon, his writing had permanence. A simple act memorializes the great love of a father for a child. It's timeless. It's radically important. Imagine Tracy, his daughter. How would you feel if your father came home to you after traveling to the moon and said, guess what, honey? I put your initials on the moon. Yours is the only name on the moon. Wow. Imagine what it says in the Old Testament that God has inscribed our name upon the palm of his hand. That is permanence. You you today matter to him. You today have an opportunity to honor him at all times and in all ways. I think it's easy to see the connection, to see the bigger point. Leaving a positive footprint, a legacy. Writing a story as grand as the love of a father for a child is something we can all do. Writing that next grand story of life for ourselves and others, for all generations. Living so that all feel valued. Expressing love with permanence. Those are things, again, that we can sink our teeth into and do every day. For the hopes of people who are possibly afraid on the potential opportunities for people to rebuild their lives when this horrible scenario of COVID-19 draws to a close. Literally, to be the voice of calm in the midst of the storm. To reflect on those permanent things of God that really matter. We, the church, are to be specialists in humanity, right? From the youngest to the oldest, for the most at risk to those with the least amount of risk. From the most healthy to those that are struggling to find health in any way. 
regardless of family type, regardless of creed, culture, or conviction. This current power does not have in its virus the power to steer us from those bedrock realities that are really our mission in Christ. It won't cause us to lose our way. We can write our own special grand story with every footprint. As caring people, we can build relationships even in an era of social distancing. These are not easy times, but with God, all things are possible. I close with a few stanzas from a poem. It's a poet that means a lot to me. His name's William Ant. It's called, This Is Your Time. Hear what David said, what Sermon said, and now what Ant says. This is your time for loneliness, for grief, for embracing doubt, for keeping hard secrets in the face of love. This is your time. This is your time for being what your people need you to be. For managing fear while showing calm. For being their mother. For being their father. For holding the line or the hope or the dream. This is your time. For sudden sunlight breaking through the overcast. For sweet green spaces in, can in, in concrete canyons. For the care of strangers for anonymous gifts, for learning to receive little acts of kindness, this is your time. For standing to be counted, for being yourself, for becoming the sum and total of your life, for finding courage, for finding your voice, for leading, because you're needed now. This is your time. Fitting words and a challenging time. Words for us today. Oh, and one more thing. That daughter, Tracy, that Sarah loved, she grew up and had three kids. Um, all girls, by the way. And that Tracy, whom he carved her initials in the moon, um, they were closed up until his passing. In 2016, Sarah was asked about what was really most important to him. He said, Hi. Just a little bit long enough to see my eldest granddaughter married. It will be a greater achievement than walking on the moon. God gave him the time to do that. Prior to his passing, he saw his eldest granddaughter married. It's another element of the legacy that he continued writing up until the last. I challenge each of us, male, female, young, old, today at St. Andrews, to be like Sermon. Draw from his example. Never stop. Listen to the words of David. Honor God at all times. Honor God in all ways. Listen to the words of Sermon. The challenge is great. It's going to forge our destiny. Leave a footprint that makes a difference now for that future. Keep exploring until the next round of service is complete. Don't stop then. Keep going. Even if you're the last, leave lasting, positive footprints. Write your own grand story.
Remember, honoring God at all times and in all ways is to give back to Him. And church, uh, this is that time. I invite you to our offering in the following way. Christ has freely given us the gift of grace and salvation. Let us therefore freely bring our generous gifts of gratitude to Him. As Joyce mentioned earlier, there is a small table set up with an offering plate on which you can place your donations and your pledges. I will offer up a gift of thanksgiving, um, and if I could ask you to bow your heads with me as I read. We give thanks to you, Lord, for your sustaining presence and your abundant grace. Receive all of the gifts that we bring to you out of your generous provision in our lives. May they be used, O oh God, to satisfy the hungry and famine, to relieve the oppressed in a time of trouble, and proclaim everywhere the good news of your Son, in whose name we graciously pray. Amen. And thank you for the gifts that you brought to the Lord financially church might continue to serve others in this time. I would like now to just spend some moments, if you would allow me, in a pastoral prayer. And in so doing, I would um, simply ask, knowing that many of you um, have concerns that have not been voiced and expressed. And if you would take those to the Lord as I pray, would delight his heart and would bring comfort to you. Let us bow our head in prayer again, and when I complete, we'll finish with the Lord's Prayer together. God in heaven, we confess today we are weary. We are weary with the news. We are weary with friends who suffer. We are weary seeing the onslaught upon our entire nation that this disease has ravaged. And we are weary, God, at the violence that just has risen up all across our country. Lord God, only you, as a people turned to honor you, can you make something good of this in our time and in our land. Lord God, your providence is complete. Your watch care of our lives is right and good, and we equally confess that, even in our weariness today. There have been names mentioned of individuals, Chris, Frank, who have been surgically, uh, and in terms of illness and recuperation. Lord God, we would just ask for your ongoing watch care over their lives, that healing would take place in your time and in your way, Lord God, we would ask for those seated in this place today who are struggling either with a personal concern or a family concern, that you would grant them a measure of your grace in providential care, above and beyond what they even imagine today. May they sense your presence and your peace. Lord God, as a congregation, we take encouragement from the fact that we can continue to serve even now. Embolden us to take that next step, to write that next story with you. Watch over us in the days to come as we gather again at another day. May we return safe and well and ready to praise and rejoice together again. We ask all of this in the mighty, providential, wonderful name of our God and Savior. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. I would ask that you stand. I'll speak a final benediction upon you as you depart from this place. It has been good to see you today. It's been good to be with you today. 
I pray that Sterling's words and David's words and even our time together are encouragement for you. Thank you for that lovely soul as well. Thank you. May the God of peace, may the God of grace, rest gently and happily upon your soul. May you find this week his love compels you to be an agent of reconciliation in our world. And may your health be such that when we gather together again, you will be rejoicing and strong, not only in your faith, but in your service and love for one another. It is in Christ's name that I speak that to you. Pray it.